And today we need men and women of God who are fine tuned to God to the level of knowing even when God is saying do not preach. Because many times when the Spirit will tell many of us do not preach, we will think it is the devil bringing hindrances. But the Bible says very clearly in the, ark, in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit forbid them to preach. After that they went to the next city and the Spirit of Jesus forbid them to preach. And then after that Paul sees a, a vision a man from Macedonia because that's where God wanted them to be. Be fine tuned to understand even when the Spirit tells you do not minister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I pray that by the end of this day, we will get men and women of God who are willing to be led of the Spirit, who are willing to be led by the Holy Spirit, who are willing to not walk by the principle. As I finish now, yeah. True, true of God, I'm finishing. In, in Acts chapter 1, the, after, after, the, the, after uh, you know, this is Luke narrating to the Ophelas the whole thing about God. And now he's telling them about Jesus ascending into heaven. And then at some point, Peter stood there. Jesus commanded them to wait until the Holy Spirit comes. And then in between there, Peter stood up and he said that, and he remembered Judas was gone and the whole thing about Judas is narrated. After that, he tells about uh, something like, as it is written in the scripture, that somebody, uh, something like, something about Judas and he needed to be replaced. Praise the Lord. And so after that he said, since he was supposed to be replaced, they called people who have been with the disciples since when Jesus started preaching. And out of the two of them, they wanted to choose one of them and they cast slots. And it was Barnabas and Matthias and they chose Matthias. But can I tell you something? When they were choosing Matthias and uh, when they were casting slots about Matthias and Barnabas, and they were taking the merit of these people who have been with us since when the gospel started, God was choosing Paul who had not faced the gospel, who had not had the gospel, he was the Pharisee of the Pharisee, and he was even much more than that, he was to come and persecute uh, uh, Stephen and the Christians, but God was choosing uh, Paul when they were choosing. I, I want you guys to get to the level of understanding who God really is and the Holy Spirit, so that you do not make the mistake of, uh, of putting your trust in your strategies, putting your trust in your connection, putting your, tr your trust in your English, putting your trust in your capacity to play the instrument, putting your trust even in the service that you've given to God. If you get Mahali, we put our trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm not a preacher of the day. I was here to do the first facilitation. You guys look amazing and be blessed and I am happy to be with you. God bless you all.
and uh, we have books out of it here. So after survey to see if you can you can just pass by, borrow a book and we should just return it uh, on the agreed date. Because we have to do so, we will attract a penalty of 10, 20 shillings per day, economy will return the 20 shillings per day. Yes, and uh, in case you lose the book, uh, it will be sorry, but you will be forced to retrieve. And we do have sticky notes and highlighter. And some, today we do have some bookmarks. Uh, one goes for 10 pop sheets. Yeah, we have the names written on it and uh, we've arranged them in um, alphabetical order. And if you can't find your name, you can write for your friends and your family. Yeah, you do that. Union 
a printer, a very good printer, not a cheap one. Celebrate your own. Good. And then, besides buying that printer, what we have is the faith. The faith of that God who has enabled us to take through this all other years so that this project as we undertake it, it will be a testimony for even the other generations, for even the living students, you know. Then it will be a testimony. We only can let them have testimony. You know. That there was an elder group that they trusted God for a print and then it came. The budget we have, uh, according to God's eyes, it is not big. To human eyes, it might look a little staggering. We are trusting God for about 200,000. In that 200,000, we are trying to mobilize the funds so that we buy a printer plus something else who also help us facilitate other, other things. So, that being said, we as elders, we become a perform, self appointed a perform. Uh, as elders, we are having these beautiful t shirts. So, this is Elders 2023. So, let me come to the elders of the shirt. Come on, we see when you can So, we have these beautiful t shirts. They are beautiful because these are white, they are not the queens who are the best. They are the I love colors. I have got you covered. This is also what you do. Colors are who? Colors are who? This is what you are doing. You are doing show off. This is gray, gray and white. This is what you are doing. You are doing this is what we see. Are we together? So we also have this mission. And then our theme pass is Pass Samuel 712. Thus far, the Lord has taken us. We are having a, a pledge here. Sikuna elderly Korean. Is it a show? We do not have 500 shillings. Very quality t shirts. It is not because of the t shirt. We are using it as a means to mobilize for their funds. So we are trusting God that Kilam to Ukishika Pahali Kakuja Ukweze buy a t shirt. For either someone who oriented you, I wish to be a Utanam to Ali Let me use an example. Um, Kunam to Ali Ebu, just in a, in a minute, just shout the name of the person who oriented you. At one, two, three, go. Masaida! Ah, Elda, go for a big time to Elda. Respect your Elda. Whatever. When you take him a fashion like me, who, who oriented you with an elder? Can you tell an income to mind? Saida, say. Again, great. So Saida was not a child by the way. None of us are focused on that. So it is showing you. It is showing you 500 more. So elder Abai, every elder should have this t-shirt. Plus again, you can buy it for yourself. This one, the reason why we had a simple marker here, for Kilam Tom is a bar. So you know that the t-shirts are cool. And if you want to be associated with this, you can do that. Come together. So those, those are the things we are doing. And as I conclude, let's take one minute. All of us, please help us dedicate this project to, to the law. Say something about it in 30 seconds and then I'll conclude and leave you in peace. Lord, thank you for this moment that you have given and watched for God the gift of faith, and the gift of brotherhood and sisters in this place, oh God. Lord, we are trusting you, God, for this 200,000, oh God, and to be able to buy the union of printer. Lord, for our own selves, we are incapable. For our own selves, we are weak, and we are broke. But with you, Lord, we know it's possible. We put our trust in you, even as we begin this journey. Be with us, guide us, and strengthen us. Lord, it is in that short prayer that we render our hearts, and commit ourselves on the project and everyone who will be in support for us. In your name we pray just to believe it. Beyond that, the court knows a switching na popcorns. Na pia uti bada ya service. So support us. The way to do a support uti bada ya service. Uti bada ya service. Una kumbuka. This is how.
body nature. With me, I have some forms here. We know that we are almost beginning uh, another bridge here, program by great division. And so, uh, in accordance to that, we would love to know the topics that we want us to, to bring here, come and learn from the Holy Spirit. So, KYM, or Asher in the Kwanbe. What's being KYM? I need an Asher. In the form. So, I call on your name of the speaker, a brief history, the your speaker when you are a ministry and meditation, a lot of the topic that you feel is best suited to cover, the contact of the speaker, and also your speaker. So, after that, there is a general call on ICT desk, and the Lord shall bless us. Very good, sir. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. Our Matthew Magia Padia, that's a big song. I'm here to perform a task of uh, facilitating giving. So, in the Christian Union, we do give towards society. Offering instruments and also we also give towards special, uh, towards uh, facilitating the bits of those who have uh, special needs. And uh, today I want to ask you all may you give up towards the service of God, may you give what we bring on towards the Lord of God. So I'll ask, uh, thank you for sharing me, and I'll ask the grace of Jesus come as I pray for the offering. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this moment. Thank you for the gift of life. As your son, as your son, I'm going to give for, for, the, for, for your service. May it bring honor to your, may it bring honor and glory to your name. In this name, I thank you. Amen. Praise God. I'm also very
the speaker. But before I do that, um, allow me to take you through a sexy brief of a speaker. Uh, his name is Samuel Karanja Nahi. He is in teaching ministry, uh, teaching and citizenship ministry at the right church. And uh, uh, he has been in ministry for the last 20 years. And uh, he went to school of ministry trainings at Rena Mission of the Outreach in Nakuru. And he's also an author of a book. Those who are here on Friday, you saw the book uh, called Morning in Prayer. It is a CPA for you. He's married with three children. Uh, I don't know about brothers who are coming to the Life. 
And I believe that all those who are here are able to understand who the Holy Spirit is clearly, and you are able to answer that question, who is the Holy Spirit? Because unless that question is answered, who is the Holy Spirit, from the biblical point of view, from the scriptures that you are able to give, then it will be very difficult for you to be able to experience the goodness of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we cannot be able to experience His role in your life. I want to begin again by saying one of the biggest problems we have in the church is ignorance of the who is the Holy Spirit. And ignorance of the ministry work of the Holy Spirit in an individual believer and in the body of Christ. I want to say here that if we are ignorant, we read Acts 19 verse, verse 1. Acts 19 verse 1 and 2, we are going to repeat it again. Today I want to use, I don't know whether you have to be fast enough because I have too many scriptures to read. Do you have a discipleship teacher? I move a little bit faster. I have so much to go to give you uh, in a little time, but I pray that my traffic is up for somebody to be one of those. And uh, uh, we read this scripture that while Apollos was at Corinth, Apollos Paul took the road through the interiors in a interior in right at Ephesus, there he found some disciples. And asked them, and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That's a very powerful question. They answered, no, we have not yet heard that there is a Holy Spirit. This is a very serious state of affairs for a believer in a church. Did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? And the answer was no. We have not had that there is any body like Holy Spirit. We have not been taught. We have not been shown by the teachers that have been with us, by the preachers that have been with us. None has told us that there is any Holy Spirit. They have not told us that they are supposed to receive the Holy Spirit and that there is the Holy Spirit and that that Holy Spirit is supposed to do something in our lives. That is the state of affairs of many Christians today. There is mass ignorance of the person of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer today is that this ignorance is going to be cancelled in this hall in Jesus' mighty name. That you are going to leave this place knowing who is the Holy Spirit and his role in your life. Do you understand? I don't have to go back to what I talked on Friday night because I talked about uh, that scripture so that we were answering now the question of who is the Holy Spirit. Now I want to speak about living a spirit-filled life. Living a spirit-filled life. This is a life that God has called us to live. Living a spirit-filled life. I want us to open the book of John 14, verse 17. John 14. Verse 17. I'm going to use the screen if I'm going to open. Uh, we can start from verse 16. It says, from verse 16, And I will ask the Father, that is Jesus who is speaking to the disciples, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it is neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives uh, with you and will be in you. I want to emphasize this. He lives with you, but will be in you. When we speak about being filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to understand there are dimensions of being with the Holy Spirit. There is a dimension of living with the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is drawing you to Jesus, convicting you of your sin, just like he's doing to the unbelievers, bringing you near to Jesus, knowing you to understand Jesus and accept him, so being with him. But there is another level, after accepting Jesus, that we need to come into a level of him being in you. What does that mean? Him being in you. So being with, being in. We need to come now to a place, after receiving Jesus, after salvation, where the Holy Spirit now comes in us, where we say we are filled with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? So the Holy Spirit is not just walking with you, but now the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, and this is the reality that believers are supposed to walk in 
where the Holy Spirit is supposed to come now and operate from, we feel you now. And now this step of being filled with the Holy Spirit is a step that we need to take in the name of Jesus. There are so many people who believe, who think that just because they believe Jesus, they have the Holy Spirit. It is true that the Holy Spirit has worked in your life. He has brought you to Jesus. He has convicted you of your sins. Even in, as a matter of, of, of fact, you cry so much when you are getting saved. What was the sound? I wish I could memorize all those groups that my, my brother was speaking here. Yeah, I have read the group. But uh, I'm not able to capture all of them. But I'm saying, Jesus, you have known Jesus, come to Jesus because of the work of the Holy Spirit. You are convicted of your sin because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And you came to Jesus, accepted him, repented of your sin, his blood washed you because the Holy Spirit convicted you and walked around you to bring you to Jesus. But you need to take a second step where now you need to come to a place where you begin to desire the Holy Spirit of God to come in you and to begin, to begin working from within you. When Jesus walked in his heart, he walked with his disciples, with his disciples, he taught them. He was their counselor, he was their comforter, he was their helper when he walked with them on his heart. But now, Jesus came to a place on an entire season when he wanted to leave them. And now he said, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. I'm going to leave another person who is going to take over from me. But the difference between me and him is that he will come to live in you, but me I'll be walking with you. So the Holy Spirit now comes to function in us just like Jesus was functioning and walking with the disciples, giving them fellowship, companionship, comforting them, being with them. The Holy Spirit now comes not like Jesus, but now comes to work from within. So Jesus walked with them, but the Holy Spirit lives, started living in them. So this is what he emphasized and said, do not leave Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. Uh, don't go and try and preach. Don't even try to go for a mission until the Holy Spirit comes. So these disciples, when Jesus was introducing, when you read uh, John uh, 14, going to John uh, chapter 16, the Holy Spirit is being introduced by Jesus. Jesus did a hard work in introducing the Holy Spirit and his work. And as I was saying on Friday, Jesus always referred the Holy Spirit as him, not as it. And one of the problems we have today is that most people are still calling the Holy Spirit and it as if it is a generator that is put in you in a room and a young or in a kuskuma. No, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal force. The Holy Spirit is a person. And Jesus introduced him as a human. He introduced his ministry. He introduced who he is and what he's supposed to do. And he told the disciples, please don't leave the, the upper room. Don't leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. Because at Pentecost now, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit now will become in them and begin to empower them and to walk with, with them and use them to do whatever Jesus wanted to do. When Jesus was walking this earth, he was doing miracles alone. And unless he delegated some of the authorities and some powers to them, but when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter number 2, it is like Jesus who was multiplied on earth. He began to be manifested to so many other people because it is, it is if the Holy Spirit in us, it is like, it is like Jesus Christ in us. What is that? That's why we call him the Spirit of Christ. Because he comes to function the same way Jesus functions, but from within us. And that is why from Acts chapter number 2, we have got a powerful church, we call the early church, that we still read and learn from because once they see the Holy Spirit, there was a different narrative from that point in the name of Jesus. And I pray today, somebody in this room, something will shift in the name of Jesus. Something will change in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want us to understand this. Jesus Christ on the cross, through his blood, he has purchased us we have become his own. That is the process of salvation on the cross. Uh, through what we call uh, the shedding of the blood. The blood of Jesus was for redemption. Just like the blood of the lambs in Egypt was for the redemption 
and was for deliverance of the people of God from the, uh, the, the bondage that was there in, uh, in Egypt and from the hands of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was, Pharaoh was a stronghold. He was a serious man, he was a dangerous man, and he held the people of God captive until Passover was released. When the blood of lambs was shed in Egypt, when there was a sound of the blood, and now there was an angel of death, that is when the children of God were delivered from Egypt. The same case, through the blood of Jesus, we have been purchased. We belong to God because the blood is for redemption. Buy us back to God. We who are lost have been bought back. Now our bodies, now our lives don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. And after Passover comes what we call Pentecost. So those two things go together in, 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 a, in, a, in, in, a, in Israel. Uh, Passover and Pentecost. Passover is God buying back our lives to himself. We become his people, we become his own. Our bodies now don't belong to us. But Pentecost is God coming to occupy his house, coming to occupy his place, coming to occupy our lives. Pentecost is God coming now to live in his temple. What does that so when you go through redemption, salvation, on the cross, you have been bought by his blood, you have accepted his, the blood of Jesus, that blood has bought you. You don't belong to yourself, you belong to him. The second step now is Pentecost. The Spirit of God comes to occupy the territory that belongs to God. He comes inside the house. That is why the Bible says in the book of um, uh, in the book of uh, First Corinthians, the book of First, First Corinthians 3 verse 16, the Bible says we don't belong to ourselves. We are not of ourselves because we have been bought by a price. Uh, First Corinthians 3 verse 16, the Bible says our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that you, yourselves, are God's temple and that God's Spirit lives, Spirit lives in you? Give us verse uh, Verse 15. Uh, verse 15, start from verse 15, going to uh, 16. Uh, just, just give me 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Don't you know that you, you yourselves are, the are God's temple? You, you are a dwelling place of God. You are a house where God lives. After salvation, our bodies become God's temples. We become a dwelling place of God. And that God's Spirit lives in you. So the Spirit of God at Pentecost came to stay inside the bodies of men who are purchased by the blood. So if you have been purchased by the blood, the Spirit comes to live inside of you and dwell and operate from within your life. And that is why we begin by salvation, forgiveness of sin, and the blood washing you, and then Pentecost. The next step, receiving the Holy Spirit. That is the second step. The first step, washing of the blood, redemption, and cleansing of your sin by the blood through the cross. And then the next step is the Holy Spirit coming to indwell, stay inside you. You become spiritual. The Spirit of God comes to live in you. Now, if you read uh, John, uh, John 16, uh, John, John, John 14, where we are, John 14, verse 17, Jesus was promising them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, the coming of the Holy Spirit was a promise of the Father from the Old Testament. If you read Joel 2, verse 28, you are going to see God began to speak many years through the prophets about the coming dispensation where the Holy Spirit will come and stay inside people and work from within uh, the lives of people. Joel 2, verse 28, you can give us it was a prophetic word by Prophet Joel about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Joel 2.28. So the coming of the Holy Spirit is something that has been uh, discussed and prophesied in the Old Testament by so many prophets. But one of the profound prophets is Prophet Joel. It says, And afterwards, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will you are a young man, shall see visions. If you are a young man, you are I am in this scripture. Say, my Nico Dana. Nico Dana. What else does that say? I don't know. This scripture covers everybody. Old men are covered. Sons and daughters are covered. Young men are covered. So it means the coming.
coming of the Holy Spirit was prophesied, and Jesus is repeating it in John 14, verse 17. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is a promise that God the Father had promised uh, the people. Every one of us, we need to understand we are, we are part and parcel of this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. There is nobody who is left out. You need to take a step today. I'm going to show you how so that you experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit and not just the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, but also experiencing other dimensions of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, so that we see how the Holy Spirit came upon these uh, believers, the early church, the apostles, uh, the 120 believers that were gathered in the, in the, in the upper room in Jerusalem. Acts 2, verse 2. Uh, let's start from verse 1 so that we know it was the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, remember, Pentecost was a usual celebration in, in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. It's called Shavuot. Uh, I happened to visit Israel during this, this celebration of Shavuot, which is the celebration of Pentecost, and uh, we went to one of the rooms that is believed to be one of the rooms that was there during those days, uh, or near the, the place, and we started believing God for revival. We started praying for the Holy the Spirit. We started praying, oh God, remember, uh, just in the scriptures we read here about the elders, uh, our elders were in church, our speaker was in church, the Holy Spirit. We see who's the elders. Amen. <laughs> so now Pentecost was a celebration in Israel, and exactly the day of Pentecost celebration in Israel, it is when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers who are waiting on the upper room. Just like Jesus had said, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one accord. I thank God for the Bible and the teacher today speaking about oneness. Oneness being one. They were one on the Pentecost day on the upper room praying together. So they had the right mind, the same mind, the same expectation and the same command from Jesus. And then they were in one room. One, one, one. And then the purpose of God was fulfilled. There is power in oneness. And there is power in being in the right place at the right time and for a certain prophetic purpose of God that is being expected. There is power in unity and oneness. Now they were together as one, verse two. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse three. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and are separated and came uh, to rest on each one of them, give me King James uh, of the same, uh, King James Version. Uh, let's see what it says about uh, these two verses. Let's start from verse 2 in King James Version. It says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. The first thing, the Holy Spirit filled the room. The Holy Spirit has a tendency of filling places where it's expected. He filled the room before he filled people. What does this say? And he just said, what? And he just said, what? Why do you want to come here? Start praying together. Start meeting people together. And then there is a voice from heaven. The Holy Spirit, first of all, fills the room. There is powerful wind in the presence. And I'm going to give you a valley. 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 And I see that there is a climate inside there that is not usual. When that climate, there is a presence there. There is something electric. I cannot get it there. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there is an environment and atmosphere you carry. Even devil worshippers, they can examine. And that's what you need in university. There's a lot of Satanism in universities. There's a lot of evil that's happening. And there's an recruitment of wickedness. We need the Holy Spirit to come and feel where you are meeting every time. And then he feels you. And then there's infusion of power from them. Remember, it was not something from the earth. It was a voice from heaven. It was something that was coming right from the heart of the Father. The Holy Spirit sent by the Father, according to the promise, coming on the Pentecost day to the believers. And the Bible says there was a mighty way and built the room where they were sitting, verse 3. And they appeared unto them, clothing tongues, as of fire, 
and they sat upon each and every one of them was four. And they were all filled. They were all filled. In them, they received inside their bodies, inside their spirits, inside their bellies, they received something. They received the Holy Ghost and began by the Holy Ghost now coming in them. The manifestation was their speaking change. In after their speaking, if you are used to mother tongue, if you are you change, you start speaking other language. You are speaking with Luya. I know you went to a mission in uh, Luya. You start, start speaking another language from heaven. Where the Holy Spirit is coming, there is a language. He came in them, filled them. After filling them, he started functioning. Gave them a language that is not from the earth, that is from heaven. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And after they were filled, they began to speak in a language they were not speaking. Their tongues were taken over by the Holy Spirit. They began to speak a language that was not happening. A language that it came from heaven. Even if the language could be heard by others, it was a language. Words that are given by the Holy Spirit. Not words that are coming from, them, from their minds. You see, sometimes when we are speaking, we, 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 we produce words that are coming from our minds. But when we are in the Spirit, we are speaking words that are coming from the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says we must pray the Spirit because the Holy Spirit functioning in us gives us what to speak. So the others changed. Now, the early church began by the coming of the Holy Spirit in the believers. I want to say this. There is no divine thing that will start on earth until the Holy Spirit comes and occupies people and begin to move them. It is the Holy Spirit coming in you and begin to function in your life that divine supernatural things begin to manifest in your life. I'm going to speak about the ministries of the Holy Spirit, but I want to emphasize about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Infilling of the Holy Spirit. Wrong takatifu kukuja ndani yako. Na wewe unaza kupata matokeo ambayo siya kawaita. Siwa kiyako tena. It's not about your brain. It's not about how you process it. It's not about good language of talking. It's not about good, uh, good, uh, good articulation. No. It's about a divine presence reproducing words that are touching heaven and are touching people. And that is why we need to teach, to teach about the Holy Spirit more than anything else. So that as you begin to do things, there is a divine manifestation. There is divine power. There is divine words. And there is divinity operating through your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when they received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter number 2, it was not enough. If you read the Acts again, four verse that you want, they were received, they were, they were, they were infilled again by the Holy Spirit. I want to speak about the culture of living a spirit-filled life. It is not an event of one day. It was not just about Acts chapter number two, when the Holy Spirit came. No, they continued to receive more of the Holy Spirit. Every day there was an infilling. Every day there was an infilling. To live a spirit-filled life, is a continuous in receiving and an infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Acts chapter number uh, 4, verse 31. Acts 4, verse 31. It says again, they went again and they were filled. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled. Filled. Our bodies are temples. They need to be filled with the glory. They need to be filled with the presence of God. God must occupy us until He fills us. Sometimes we see a small measure of the Holy Spirit. We speak in few times and we think we are still filled. Being filled is your vessel being filled until it overflows in your life. It is a continuous process. It is not a one-time event. I have seen so many people who are filled with the Holy Spirit many years ago. They spoke in some tongues, but after some few years, they are very dry because they did not continue in the receiving and in feeling process of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying here, being filled with the Holy Spirit, it is a continuous process. It must continue. The experience must continue. The drinking of the Holy Spirit must continue. The moment you feel you are, the moment you think you are still filled, and stop going from home, the same time you begin to go back and dry up. And most Christians 
Christians are trying to be weak and feeble, sin has taken over their lives, they have gone back to the world, and yet they are in the church because they have lost their feeling of the Spirit. What is They have lost the feeling. And today I'm speaking here, if you have lost the feeling, I'm going to have a moment to pray with you. Because we need to add the feeling. That's not what we're going to do. It's like drinking. You see, to my shima now, I let you a little capisa, and I put one of the women of the women, so I can't put it. She had a little bit of a soil. And then she's always in the good as a woman. When I put your side, so I can't put it in a fish. But real drunkards, they drink the drink, and then the drink takes over them. When I put one of the women, I'm going to put one of the women. We don't know our part. What is our area? Kinuaji chetu ni wao mtakatifu. Lazima tutae leo kinuaji mpaka itubebe. It takes over you. It carries you. It controls you. Until the drink takes control over you, you are not drunk. Ambe mzaa kwa 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 Until you can forgive your enemies, the drink has not taken over you. Until you can pray for some hours, the drink has not taken over you. This drink, called the Holy Spirit, you must be filled with it until it carries you, takes over you. In the Ujawa Faka, in the Tekoma, I think I don't know the Spirit, in the Ujawa Samara, in the Tunatumia, one of them we use is be filled with the Holy Spirit. I wish I had a cup of liquid. Now, this cup is almost filled, isn't it? There's a small space in baby. Imagine it's not filled. There's this small space in baby. Like in the cup of increase and a spire major. Like in the heart, now we have a space back in the back. That's my idea to end a very crystal going before Christ until there is no other space remaining in the cup. Oh my God, that's what we need to be. The drink must fill the cup, and then if you continue for more, it will begin to overflow. What people take is the overflow of the feeling cup. So until you go for more, until there is an overflow, people cannot drink anything. What else was that? There is no joy of salvation. Uh, there is a place, uh, Psalms uh, 51. David is crying before God because David knew the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he was saying, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew the Holy Spirit can be taken from you. And he was saying, don't take the joy of my salvation. He knew the joy of salvation, it is an overflow of the Holy Spirit. So if you have never experienced joy unspeakable in your Christian life, it's because your feeling has not taken over. The feeling that's experience you have never experienced that experience. And I'm saying it's an experience that you must continue in. Now, this is the second time. Acts 2 verse 2. Acts 4 verse 2. They were filled with their Holy Ghost. They and they spoke in the word, they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now this time they were asking for power to speak with boldness because there were threatenings against the preaching of the resurrection of Jesus. Because the Pharisees and the scribes and the rulers of the day didn't want the witness of Jesus to continue because they thought the witness of Jesus was continuing. Miracles, signs and wonders, salvation, cities were beginning to turn around, believing Jesus, and these people wanted to conceal the issue of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And the very reason why the Holy Spirit is said is for the witness of the resurrection of Jesus. So they went to Jesus, they asked him, they asked Jesus, what are we going to do? Behold, they are threatening. What are we going to do? They are threatening. Oh Lord, the Holy Spirit was sent again. He filled the room again. The place was shaken, and then they were filled. I want to tell you, there is the issue of a place where you are sent. Acts chapter 2, you can see, he filled the room. Acts chapter 4, the place where the one was shaken. My friend, come on, just carry on, come 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 on, I'm going to repeat it. You know, like I just kept I want to repeat it again. Because it can be an experience. Just like there is a university somewhere in America where something is happening in a room. It 
can happen here. You just think people are going to be crazy the way you're going to speak down here. We are satisfied with very little in the Christian life. That's why to achieve the knowledge of here. We are so satisfied with very little. We need to rise up, and I'm going to show you how in Jesus' name. So there's the issue of the place where people gather. Being shaken, being filled. The Holy Spirit doesn't just shake people. But you have to refer to what
because it is consuming, consuming the fuel. What else that? You are consuming power, you are consuming virtue from the Holy Spirit. You must continue in the feeling. What else that? That means that continue in the feeling. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? John 7, verse 37. I'm trying to move very fast. And uh, because we cannot exhaust this topic. John 7, verse 37. How do you get the filling of the Holy Spirit? How do you get filled? Says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. That's why I'm saying the Holy Spirit is a drink. And therefore, for any drink, somebody must thirst. For any drink, somebody must thirst. What does this You will never be filled until you are thirsty. You will be filled to the level of your thirst. What does so the Holy Spirit is a drink, but you will never drink until you are thirsty. So the way to receive the Holy Spirit after receiving Jesus and, and after uh, you are redemption, forgiveness of sin, is you must develop dependency, strong hunger and thirst for the Holy Spirit. You must come to a place where you say, it is not by my strength, it is not by my ability, I must be empowered to, to, to live this life. To be able to confront the things that I'm confronting, to be able to live divine life on earth, I need the Holy Spirit. That hunger for the divine, that hunger for divine life, that hunger to live a powerful Christian life is what drives us to Jesus to drink the Holy Spirit. Because unless you receive, you receive this drink, unless you take this drink, you can never manifest divine life. You will never, you can pretend to be powerful, but you can't be real powerful until the Holy Spirit has filled you and you have drunk more of him until Christ is manifested in your life. So, in the last day of the feast, Jesus cried. On the issue of the Holy Spirit, Jesus cried. When Jesus stood to speak about the issue of receiving the Holy Spirit, he cried. If any man fast, it means this world, people are passing for many things. People are in prostitution, people in drug, drug addiction, because they are trying to feel the hunger and the thirst of their life. Young men are destroyed today because of hunger and thirst in their life. And they don't know there is one drink, if you receive it, it quenches all your thirst. This is the drink that Jesus gave the woman of Samaria in John chapter 4. He said, the drink that I give, it is a drink that becomes a well out of you and satisfies men. You will never be satisfied in this life until you drink the drink of Jesus, the drink of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Universal students, I want to say here, there are so many things that people are looking for in this world. Maybe you think, if I get money, I'm very happy. See, you here. You don't do all. There's a question. That's the sad. Any question you require to invest on campus? You can get a You can a You can a You can get 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 a You can a You can get 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 a the more you drink, the more you empty. The more you prostitution, the more you empty. Because you will never satisfy the spiritual hunger of a man. That hunger in a man, move on a cracker, hydrate it, it has to issue a picture of your living here. It can never. Only a divine drink can satisfy, quench the thirst in men. Only. And the drink in this place is a holy spirit. When you drink it like a drink, then you are satisfied. There is a fulfillment, there is joy. Like uh, a drink is saying this. Uh, Psalm 51, he talks about the joy, restore to me the joy of salvation. He endures the joy of salvation. Most people have never enjoyed salvation because they have ignored the drink of the Holy Spirit. So the, the key now here is thirst. The key here is thirst. Any drink is about thirst. So it should have to be thirsty. Number 38, the next verse. He that believes on me, that is, First time I say it, there's more consequences, there's more convenience. As the scriptures have said, out of this very shall flow rivers of living waters. That's 39. But 
I spoke this of the spirit which they that believe would should receive. They which they that believe should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet ascended or glorified. So it was until Jesus was ascended when the Holy Spirit came. So he spoke and said, Out of your bellies, as you drink, as you get the feeling, as you are feeling more, then rivers of living waters begin to flow out of your bellies. Rivers of living waters refer to so many things. Uh, one of the rivers that flows out of spiritual men is found in Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 is one of the rivers. There are so many rivers, but there is this river that flows when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And St. Paul says, And be not drunk with wine while right in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Praise, worship, thanksgiving, spiritual songs, melody from heaven. Flows through men who are spiritual all the time. 24 hours flow of worship out of your heart comes because of living a spiritual life. One of the blessings of living a spiritual life is singing songs that are coming from heaven. Spiritual songs are songs that are coming in tongues that are being deposited by God. Maybe it's a song that is being sung in heaven and the Holy Spirit brings it in you. You start singing together with heaven the same song because the Holy Spirit is in you. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit comes to bring. The flow, what has the sun? And uh, there are so many blessings that the Holy Spirit brings. When the Holy Spirit continues to work in your life, it produces two things the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts is the power of Christ, the fruit is the character of Christ. The character of love, the character of peace, the character of patience, generosity. Uh, Galatians 5 22, you can read. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. These are production of a life of the Spirit in you, what has the sun? These are characters, characters of Christ. These are displays of the character and the nature of God in you because of the rulership control of the Holy Spirit. And then first of the story was one, I'm actually going to say that I don't have time to teach about this. Uh, first of all, the story was to talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of power, wisdom of God through you in the name of Jesus Christ. So I've said here that to receive the Holy Spirit is about task. And big feeling is a process. There are so many ministries of the Holy Spirit, I can't be able to finish them. But I can say the Holy Spirit is a teacher. The Holy Spirit will teach you. That's, why, that's one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit. He teaches us. He teaches us. Uh, the reason why the Holy Spirit is a good teacher is because he's the one who ordered the Bible. He the leader of Biblia, he inspired the people to write the Bible. So he's the best teacher of the Bible. He can teach you the Bible. Any verse can interpret it when you are with him because he was the author of the Bible. Now, the other thing is that the Holy Spirit is a transformer, is an agent of transformation. If you read 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, the Bible says, We are changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. As we begin to become like Christ, the Holy Spirit is functioning inside us, is burning like fire, is making us become purer and more better by His power in us. He transforms us. He is an agent of transformation. And by becoming an agent of transformation, He makes you an agent of transformation in your generation. There is no way to become an agent of transformation if you are not transformed. And the agent of transformation that Jesus has sent in us is the Holy Spirit. He comes in you to transform you to become what He wants you to be. The Holy Spirit is a guide. He has the roadmap to your destiny. He ministers to you and shows you where you're supposed to go. He knows your destiny. He knows you're the best career you should have taken. Maybe some of you are making the wrong career right now. But the Holy Spirit, as a guide, is able to show you the roadmap to what you're supposed to be in life. And you begin to shape your life. In accordance with guidance, you become what God wanted you to be in the name of Jesus. I don't have enough time for us to start up in the name of Jesus Christ. I want someone to receive the Holy Spirit. I want someone to receive the Holy Spirit because this is a Holy Spirit subject. I want you to lift your hand and tell the Lord, Oh my God, I need the Holy Spirit in my life. And I cannot do without Him. I cannot even pretend. I raise my thirst and hunger in the name of Jesus Christ. I raise my level of hunger. If you have never seen the Holy Spirit, just come here and pray together as we finish this session in the name of Jesus. We need to pray that we get filled and filled and filled and filled and filled. And you can be filled from anywhere. I was filled when I was alone. You can be filled wherever you are. But I want you to take a step of faith if you are here and you need the feeling. You have never been filled. You are born again, yes. 
But the step of it feeling until we are going to pray now begins to move in your life. That's never happened. I want you to lift our hands in the name of Jesus and tell the Lord, Lord, we are here in the name of Jesus Christ. That we may receive the feeding of the Holy Spirit. Just like on the Pentecost day, when the Holy Spirit came upon these believers and filled them, we desire the same experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just lift your hands in desperation. We need it. Paul and uh, Paul emphasis upon the people of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, they cry and say, Do not remove the Holy Spirit from me. He knew the benefits of having the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Just lift your hand and pray to God in Jesus' name. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you. He will fill 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 you. Until you overflow, He will change you. As you become an agent of transformation in the name of Jesus, and you speak up, and in languages you have never spoken, you will move in a different direction. You will do what you will not have done in your own time, in your own power, because of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. This come, I believe this semester you can do more as a Christian union if you allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you in the name of Jesus, to fill you, to fill you, to fill you. If you are filled, you need to be filled in the name of Jesus Christ so that your life can transform. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit in this campus. We pray in the name of Jesus that there shall be a change by this message. By this message. By this message. Let it be a seed of God, of greater moves of God in this place. In the name of Jesus. Transform us to become agents of transformation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. You are here not born again and you would like to commit your life to Jesus. I say the first step is you getting born again. I want you to lift your hand and pray with you. You have never given your life to Jesus. You are trying to fill your life with emptiness of the world. You are trying to be satisfied by the things of the world. You will never. It is only Jesus by His Spirit that can satisfy the longing of your heart. The woman of Samaria tried many things, but she was not satisfied. I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus. You are here. You want to be born again, just lift your hand. I will pray with you and just speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you need Jesus and then you need the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that God is going to do a mighty thing in this campus. As the word of God has come today, I pray that, that every one of us is going to have time. Time to close yourself in with God and receive a fresh baptism, a fresh feeling, another feeling of the Spirit until there is an overflow in your life. The people of the world are waiting for our overflow. They are waiting for your overflow. Your overflow of power. Your overflow of wisdom by the Spirit of God. I pray that this place shall be changed. Something new shall come out of this place. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray for this place. That in the name of Jesus, there shall be a release of fire and power from heaven. That we shall have men and women going to rise up, receive the feeling of the Spirit, and the operations of the Spirit shall start in this place. Just like you started in America, recently in the university, you are able to do it here all the long. You get a vessel that you can feel here, and that vessel can become a, a channel of the move of God in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus. That the networks of the devil can be broken in this place all the long. In the name of Jesus, in this university, in this main campus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Oh Lord, I pray. Oh Lord, I pray. Pray today with me, O oh God. Oh, pray with me, everybody. That God shall get vessels in this place. That there shall be a change in this place. Oh, that God shall get vessels, vessels to be and use mighty. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I give you glory and praise. I bless your holy name. I worship and exalt your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Thank you very much for this.